So today's topic is a topic called loops, a very common concept in programming. Basically a loop is nothing more than a sequence of instructions that's continually repeated until some kind of end condition is met. So I'll give you an example. In real life, most of our days are basically the same thing. We wake up, we go to the bathroom, we shower, we get dressed, we go to school or we go to work depending on where you are in life. At the end of the day, you come home, you eat dinner, and then you go to bed, you wake up, and you repeat the same thing over and over, day in, day out. What you are is you're stuck in a loop. What is the end condition for that loop? Unfortunately, it's death. Well, that's a little morbid. Hopefully, it's just retirement. But in any case, the point is it does have an end condition. Eventually, you're going to stop and break that cycle. But that cycle is, in fact, just a loop. Same thing over and over and over and over again. In programming terms, we call one cycle of a loop an iteration. An iteration. So you could say something like, how many times does that loop iterate? Or what iteration did the error occur on? Something along those lines. Now loops, uh, they're very useful in a lot of different things. You might see them in password programs. For example, if you're trying to limit the user to a specific number of tries, you might say, loop through this, loop through this um, sequence three times that asks the user for their password and compares it against the real password. Or you might use a loop to analyze a string character by character. So you can go look at each individual character to make sure that it is what you expect it to be or test it for some other value. You might use it to repeat a process like drawing 10 of one thing on a screen rather than doing all 10 commands one at a time separately. You can just do it in a loop. A game loop, which we've been using uh, quite extensively at this point, is in fact a loop. Its end condition is exiting, the, the user deciding to exit the program. So that is what we call an infinite loop. It'll go on forever and ever and ever and ever again until some condition says stop. Um, animation, basic animation. Animation itself is a loop. You draw, you change, you draw, you change, you draw, you change. Same thing over and over again. One of the most useful applications of loops, though, is working with arrays. Now, what you see on the screen right now is a very basic um, example of a program. And then in that program, it's set up to create an array of three items. And then in, and in that array, uh, or sorry, the purpose of this program is to fill up that array with values from the user. So you might do something like this, where you ask the user, please enter a number. And you hit fill in that first number, num0 equals integer.parsint, input dot next line. Great, no problem at all. Now you want to do that for the next three elements as well, or the next two elements as well. So you can fill that up, change our number, the only real change here is changing that one to a, or the zero to a one and then the one to a two. And that'll get all the data. No problem. Not a lot of effort. But what if we change this? What if this three becomes a ten thousand? All of a sudden the amount of work you have to do grows a lot. And in the reality, you don't want to write that code. And your code doesn't and, and nobody wants to read that code. It's terrible it's terrible to look at. What loops is gonna help us do is get rid of all of these separate lines and basically what we're gonna do is now this is just uh, not real code at this point but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna say start a loop here and say do it 10,000 times and then we end the loop down here now where the actual syntax is obviously much different from this but um, and the index inside the array is going to change but basically you see the point 10,000 times we're going to ask the user for a number and then we're going to read in that number and store it in the appropriate in the, into the appropriate index in the array this is an absolutely amazing concept to work with large amounts of data and this is where we're going to focus most of our effort when it comes to loops so that's what a loop is next we're going to figure out how to build them